Logan, this micro lecture is on kinetic energy. Remember, micro lectures are intended to be short, um, that way you can watch several of them in a row. This one, as always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary, and your follow up questions on Google Forms. So, before we talk about what kinetic energy is, let's talk about what energy is. And this is going to be a working definition, and by that I mean a definition that's not uh, too technical but kind of gives us a sense of. Uh, what it is. So energy is the ability to cause a change in motion, temperature, or position. Again, this isn't the most formal definition, but it gives us a sense of what energy is. It's this kind of concept, it's this idea, it's not a specific thing. Um, it is like you can't like have it in your hands or anything like that. Um, but it's this idea of the ability to cause changes in motion, temperature, or position, um, either currently causing them or in the future. So that being said, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So it's how much energy something has simply because of its motion. So if we think about Superman and Flash, they have tons of kinetic energy because they're moving very fast. Something that wasn't moving wouldn't have any kinetic energy. And here the idea of kinetic energy gives us the idea that if it has movement, it can transfer that energy of movement to something else through a collision or things along those lines. The formula for it is uh, Ke equals one half mv squared, where Ke stands for kinetic energy. The units for all types of energy are joules. Uh, that's represented with a capital J here. And um, we can see that it is, again, one half times mass times velocity squared, where it's just the velocity squared, not the mass or the one half. All right, so let's practice graphing it real fast just so we can look at what type of trend is it. So we're going to graph the kinetic energy of something that has a mass of two kilograms and starts from rest but accelerates to five meters per second and see what happens to its kinetic energy as we go along. So we can see if we plug in up here that we get a value of zero for the kinetic energy when it's not moving. So again, no movement, no kinetic energy. If we plug in a value of one for the velocity, we can see that it comes out to one joule. If we plug in two for the velocity, we can see that it doesn't just double the amount of kinetic energy, it actually quadruples it. And the reason why is because of this squared term right here. Three, we get nine joules. At four, we get 16. And at five, we get 25. And we could go on and on with this one. Um, and this is just one case. But we can see that it is a quadratic trend, mainly because of the squared term on velocity. So that brings us to this idea that kinetic energy is a quadratic relationship, at least when you're comparing kinetic energy to velocity. If you compare it to mass, then it's not quadratic. Also, um, just so you know, kinetic energy is sometimes written as E with a subscript K. That tends to be the IB style notation for it. And you'll see others out there as well. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. One to two sentence summary and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.